Hey everybody, and welcome back to I Do Everyday Automation, where we talk about products and projects to make life easier. A few weeks ago, I did two videos, one showing you guys how to turn an old laptop into an Android PC, and another one on how to replace your aging Fire TV with the same laptop, but with a port of Android TV. One of the key drawbacks to these methods were the fact that since it was a laptop and not a desktop, the primary screen that the PC recognized was the built-in monitor. On desktops, you don't have this option because most of them only have one device that's doing the output if it's a standard desktop. So I muddled around and, and dug and dug, and eventually, with the help of someone, uh, got a little bit of headway, but there was no way to edit the grub menu, which is the menu you're presented with after the PC logo where you select which version you want to run of the Android port. But I did some backtracking and realized that this grub menu had to be in the initial configuration whenever you go to install the Android version that you're going to do, whether it was video one or video two. So I did a little bit of digging and I definitely found the config where you can edit it and add an additional line to the grub. If you're only going to be using this at home, I'm going to show you guys where you can add it into this configuration file for different orders. For instance, if you add it to the top, you can just power on the device and let it run through its normal boot menu and it should load to the screen. If you add it lower in the list, if you're going to be traveling like I am with this tablet, then it'll still show up in the grub to where you don't have to edit the config file and you can just hit it and go. So let's go ahead and jump into those two methods. Okay, so we load our first USB drive and we're gonna go ahead and open it up and take a look at what's inside. So I noticed a couple of folders here. You have a disk folder, an Android folder, a boot folder, an EFI folder, ISO Linux, so on and so forth. So I dug into the boot folder and I saw a folder labeled Grub. Did a little bit more investigating and I saw a Grub config file, which got me interested. So I right clicked on that guy and decided to open it with my notepad. And here I saw that the source was EFI boot Android config. It had a set timeout to 30 seconds and it had set debug mode to live, which told me I was on the right track. So then I went back and I said, okay, well, let's backtrack. And we're gonna go to the EFI folder found our boot folder, found our Android config file, and selected edit with notepad. And instantly I saw this line right here, which is where we would usually edit during the restart of the computer when we got to the grub menu options and hit E to edit the grub file. So this is for the Android x86 version, not the Android TV version. And since they have this coded and it's not straight lines for each individual grub menu input, we're gonna have to edit it here. So right behind the line where it says permissive, you can put it in other places in this line, but this is where I usually would like to put it. I'm gonna put video equals E D P. Minus one, it's gonna be called D. And that then gives us our menu option. So for this install, whenever you run it, it's automatically gonna go to that video input. I'm gonna leave a couple of other video input options down at the bottom of the screen that, that work. Yours may not be video equals EDP, it may be a variation of this. So one of the other menu options down at the screen may be what you would need to use. So you can kind of play around with them and see what works. So you just add this portion once you actually create the jump drive before you do the installation. 
And this should give you the desired option in that grub menu to where you can boot straight to a television if you're not gonna be using this as a tablet or laptop style PC. So let's go ahead and take a look at the Android TV jump drive and see what we need to do there to make the edits. Okay, so now we're back with the second drive and we can see that the format for it is a little bit different. Let's just change the view so it kind of looks the same. Yeah, so we can see the format for the actual drive layout is a little bit different. We have pretty much some of the same folders. So let's go ahead and take a look at the EFI folder first. We see a boot folder and we see a grub EFI, a boot 32 and a boot 64. We'll start here and as you can see that's ineligible just kind of like it was on the last drive. I didn't show you guys that. So we'll go back. folder and as you can see there's a grub config so when we take a look at that this looks a lot more like what we would normally see on the grub menu so from here what I want to do is just add another menu I'm gonna copy that bottom I'm gonna paste it but what I want to do here is actually make this the secondary make our top one the primary so we'll go ahead and edit it right here it says permissive just like we did on the first one I'm gonna put video equals e dp minus one d just like that and like I said depending upon your settings you may have to go to a different uh, you may have to go with a different version of this line. And again, I'm gonna put it at the bottom of the screen. But for instance, I was assisting one of my friends with this setup and we discovered, or so he discovered that he had to put video equals HDMI in all capital letters, minus one with the colon sign, capital D. And then he also had to put video equals capital LVDS minus one with the colon sign with the lowercase d. So there are different variations to get it to work properly. So you may just need to check and see what uh, what inputs and outputs your device has. And I think in his case, it probably was because I want to say that laptop had two outputs on it. So one was to disable the primary and enable the secondary. We're gonna go ahead and save this and we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna re-image the laptop that I have here with the new grub menu in place to see how that affects the output but before we go there I'm gonna show you one other place where you may need to edit this if you're going to be working strictly from a desktop environment. So you're going to want to go to the ISO Linux folder as well. And as you can see, there's an ISO Linux config file here. I'm going to edit that with Notepad. And this is what looks like it shows up whenever you're actually running the install 
of the actual boot drive. So if we want to actually run that from the main TV monitor, we can do that here as well. And just like the last time, what we would do is we can copy any one of these lines. And in this one, we're going to do the install because we're not going to do the live version. So if you want to run this, and that's another thing, just a note real quick. So if you actually want to run this Android TV variation of Android x86 from a jump drive exclusively, you can do it here as well. And you can just edit that same one with the same bit of code so that whenever you enter the jump drive into a PC that's hooked up to an HDMI or DisplayPort monitor, you can have it output directly to that monitor instead of from the laptop. And you can do that right here. So you can always do that from this drive at a later date. But if you want to do it as part of the install, go ahead and edit it here as well. So we'll copy this line. We'll paste it there. And we'll just call this one install HDMI. So we know that the input will go out to the HDMI port. And we'll type the same thing, video equals EBP minus one colon D. And that's it, we'll save this as well. And while we're here, I'm gonna go ahead and take a look at one other thing that I may have neglected to do on the first file so yeah we're going to want to rename this so we don't have two of them showing as android tv 712 x86 live we'll call this one live hd so as i mentioned just now live is actually for the live installation we need to edit the installation version so we'll go ahead and copy this line. For acting services rendered, and I gave myself uh, five years or three years maybe, and uh, and I dated it there. Back in 1995, just before. And we'll leave this one as is. I found out that I was make and then we'll go up to the install and type the same thing. Video. this as well and now we should be good to go all right so we're gonna go ahead and get our flash drive installed into the PC And get this show on the road. So yes, I'm actually sacrificing my um, my installation here. But if you use ES File Explorer to transfer APK files and applications, you can actually back up your apps that way you don't have to re-download them the information on the apps unfortunately you'll lose but this at least gives you the option to properly adjust everything without having to start over completely all right so we're going to go ahead and go down to uefi boot and we're going to select the usb disk And from here, you see the first option says Android TV 712x86 Live HDMI. And then we have down here 712x86 Live. So that should be our installation. So we're gonna go down. And we 
select our Samsung partition. Tell it to format. Hit yes. We want it to install the EFI Grub2 menu. And yes, we want to format the boot partition. We want to install the system directories read write. We're going to tell it to run Android TV. And as you can see, this menu is now, this screen is now blank. And we have Android TV loading onto the TV natively. So I'm going to go ahead and hit the power button and do a quick reboot. And we should be back to the laptop. As long as everything goes as planned, we should see it come back up on the TV screen. And that's it. That's how you fix your installation. So that's it for the steps that you need to take to get the grub menu to boot straight to the HDMI port. Uh, so your results may vary. I do have a little bit more customization into my Android laptop. But you can use ES File Explorer, like I mentioned, to back up almost any app on any Android device. So let me know down in the comments how this works out for you guys. And let me know if you're still having issues or trouble with getting the Grub menu to boot straight to the HDMI port instead of to the laptop screen. All right, guys, that's gonna do it for this video. Hopefully you guys learned something. And if you liked it, make sure you hit the like button and subscribe so you see more content like this as I produce it. And if you guys have any questions or comments, make sure you comment down below. A lot of times people make comments to the videos and that's how I come up with these follow up and update videos. So your participation and activity definitely helps to grow the content on the channel. See you guys on the next one, later.